All right, so two weeks ago I put out a post um, online to create a video campaign or video to support uh, Bernie Sanders in his election as he requested for his online audience. A good friend reached out to me and said he is a political analyst and political science professor who wanted to have a chat. So I figured let's get him in here, have a millennial style interview and get some of the issues on the table and show what uh, a new country can look like with Bernie Sanders. Let's talk about this and bring in Peter Matthews. Peter's new book, The Dollar Democracy, is a must-read expose of how our government has been hijacked by big money. I mean, I was Peter. thinking about it when he first started. Someone saying, running for president, I want to create a political revolution. Never happened. In you would have got shot before. during the McCarthy Never ages. Bernie is probably the most democratic, small d, mm -hmm. most horizontally organized campaign who believes that the people have to lead the, the revolution. But he's a socialist. What's going to happen to our country? It's going to become more democratic. So, real quick, can you just give us a quick introduction about your background and your academic research and um, work in political science. Sure. I've been teaching political science uh, full-time at Cypress College for about 30 years now and part-time at Long Beach City College I teach sociology. So I have two fields. Poli sci is my main field. Sociology also has some doctorate work in it so I was able to teach that and they're related to each other, you know. So I've been doing that for a while. I've uh, also been doing a lot of television and radio work recently to get the word out and try to educate the public mm -hmm. and not just the classroom. But it's a real pleasure to be with students, with young people, especially the millennial generation, which is such an important generation. And it's the, not the future of the country, it's the present mm -hmm. and the future. And that age group is very much of interest to me. And I work with them, mostly them. Most of my students are under 30. Mm -hmm. Some of them are older. And it's just an inspiration to be in the classroom with them, to be able to discuss ideas about the country, about the world, about their philosophical ideas, and mm -hmm. what values underlie what we do in politics, and mm -hmm. what issues are pushed and put into place, and what aren't, and what needs to be done in this country right now, mm -hmm. with what's going on with the horrendous gap between rich and poor, the uh, generational divide where this generation will be the first, if things keep going as they are, to do worse than their parents. The first modern American generation in this century to do less well or worse off than their parents in so many different ways, in gradu graduating on time from college, mm -hmm. being able to get a good job and earn enough money to be able to move out on your own. Uh, and also, when you, when you get married, your generation, I'm assuming you're in the generation, the 25 million I generation. I am, I am. And your generation, it's taking you folks longer to get married or to even move away from home and even have children. The childbearing years have been put off by a couple of years compared to my generation, mm -hmm. the baby boomers. Let me ask you this. There's a, a Chinese proverb that says, one generation will plant the seeds so the next can enjoy the shade. Yes. What kind of seeds have been planted for us? And you, t you, you wrote in your book, real quick, I'll just talk about uh, the dollar democracy with liberty and justice for some, how to reclaim the American dream for all. Um, you talk about uh, the corrupting influence of private money in politics, disappearing middle class, environmental destruction, dismantling of public education, endangering our water and food supply, and lack of health care. It's just a total, to me, not only a fiasco, but it's a crime in a sense, a social crime, mm. a social sin that one generation will allow the next generation to completely deteriorate their chances like this. And it's against the U.S. Constitution, by the way. The Constitution says in the preamble, we the people of the United States, mm -hmm in order to establish a more perfect union and to ensure tranquility, domestic tranquility, to promote the general welfare, meaning the well-being, mm -hmm. and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. That's the next generation. I like Chief Seattle's idea even better. He said the next seven generations whom we should be considering when we make our decisions today. And that's not what's happening in the American government or the leadership today. I always hear the millennials are entitled, they're naive, they're lazy, they don't want to work for anything. That yeah. claim is a complete hogwash Tell me why. them being entitled. Because I work with them. I'm the one who teaches. I'm there in my classrooms. I can see how they're struggling and working hard. And they work two and three jobs, many of them, in the middle class mm -hmm. to try to make ends meet, to be able to graduate on time. They're looking for courses that they can't even get because the university and college doesn't provide the courses because of cuts in funding. Mm -hmm. So that's a bunch of hogwash, like I said. And I think it's put on by some of the elites in the older generation who want to absolve themselves of responsibility of what they did not do for the next generation. That's my interpretation of it. And it's totally wrong for us to, for them to, not me, because I don't condemn the young people at all. 